Good day, RGB. Today on Valley Por Vida, we're talking wellness tips all about seven authors and their work. We're going to be bringing uh, parents some tips on navigating social media with their teens. Plus, we've got so much more. So let's get to it because uh, the show starts right now. And thanks again for joining us today. I'm your host, Danielle Bonda. So the month of August, according to the nationaldaycalendar.com, is actually National Wellness Month. And uh, in honor of that, we're giving you a few wellness tips that you can easily incorporate into your life. So according to the site, this is a month dedicated to overall wellness. So this is our time to make sure that we're prioritizing self-care and staying on top of our stress. See, it's not okay to just go, 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 even though, yes, we do, we do have responsibilities. But, you know, we've got to challenge ourselves to focus on all of our internal happiness as much as we place, you know, on, uh, you know, like emphasis on adulting. You know, of course, overall wellness means physical and mental health as a combination. So just, you know, Keep that in mind with anything that you do this month and here on out. And the site recommends that we focus on little things too, you know, like drinking more water, adding more fruits and veggies to our diet, maybe do yoga or incorporate quiet time into your daily routines and make sure that you're getting enough sleep. After all, it's the small steps that really add up to make a big difference. And if you do any of these things, then make sure to use the hashtag Wellness Month on social media. And if you do post any photos of your own wellness journey, then be sure to caption it with the statement, I choose wellness, you know, to help inspire and encourage others to go on and live the same healthy journey. And this month, you can also uh, try to live healthier, which means dedicate time to performing good work-life balance. And if you don't have one already, it's now the right time to do so. Um, you know, it also means that you can try to come up with unique and personal ways to help manage your anxiety and your stress. And whether that be going for a run, taking a moment to meditate, you know, talking to a professional counselor or therapist, or just dancing it out. I mean, everyone's different, which means everyone manages stress differently. So just try and find a healthy outlet that works for you in your life. And lastly, make sure that you're balancing alone time with your social life, of course. You know, we always want to be there for our friends and our family, but it's equally important to have dedicated time to ourselves so that we can focus on our own goals, dreams, or just to rest in silence. You know, the world is such, it's just moving at such a fast rate and it's hard to keep up, but it's easier to manage when we are devoted to our own well-being as well. So we definitely hope that you can implement at least some of these tips this month as well as every month. And you got to focus on your own well-being in order to reach your dreams. In fact, one RGB native just recently accomplished one of their goals of writing his first ever sci-fi novel uh, and then publishing it. Valley author and Harlingen native William Steele is the 25-year-old author of The Spark, and it's actually the first book in Beyond the Light series uh, universe. Uh, now, this piece of literature is recommended for readers around the ages of 13 and up, and it was released earlier this month, which is so exciting. Again, it's a, a science fiction fantasy or a magical surrealism type of story, and it's really interesting, you know, about characters journeying to self-discovery and just understanding and undergoing trials in the universe. Now, the cool thing here is that William is actively working with small businesses here in the Rio Grande Valley, all in an effort to help promote reading. And he's visiting local coffee shops and public libraries and bookstores and uh, even comic book shops. Now, he's even doing book readings, signings, and collaborating with different local school districts and teachers, you know, to help inspire our next generation of young readers and authors from all across the 956. And we had the chance to catch up with him for an inside look at his journey thus far. My name is William Steele. I am the author of the Beyond the Light series, and I'm really excited to share with you guys the debut of my first novel, The Spark. The Spark is a science fiction fantasy novel that I've been working on for like the last four years. It's the first in a book series of four, and the contents of the book, without ruining anything too much, um, is going to be uh, the story of two protagonists. Yaya, he is the last mage on another planet named Fear in another dimension. 
and Dr. Liam, who is uh, kind of this obsessed scientist that wants to essentially transition his people into an eternal being. And you deal with the theory and people and their progression from nomadic, egalitarian, uh, kind of harmonic seeking individuals into sedentary, capitalist, artificially sentient individuals. So they go from being temporal to immortal. Uh, and you kind of like are dealt uh, the problems with that, the things that they have to face together, and of course, um, what the fate of the theory of people is. So I think the initial inspiration for the novel was actually uh, a poem uh, that is used by the main protagonist at the towards the end of the novel, towards the end of the book. The poem is called The Spark, which is also the title of the book. Um, and I was pretty much just inspired to share an example of what it's like to let your imagination kind of just run wild and to explore what that looks like uh, for myself. So the the spark was kind of the, the birth child of wanting to just pursue curiously what it would look like to create another world. And, and then it ended up developing into something more. So it, it showed me that once you start creating something, uh, it kind of takes a life of its own and it's your job to just kind of like listen and to like follow it wherever it goes. And since we're so proud that William is positively representing our Rio Grande Valley community, we thought we'd look at other local authors whose literature has helped to put the 956 on the map. First up, UTRGV's communications professor, Dr. W. F. Strong, is an amazingly talented author whose series, Stories from Texas, has captured the hearts of so many Texans and Americans in general. You can check out each of his episodes by visiting texasstandard.org, and there you'll see an array of topics covered. And just remember, only some of them are true as he says. Plus, he's also always helping to inspire other, uh, you know, young authors and aspiring media professionals in any way that he can. But he's honestly got so many different projects that are incredibly successful and it just, it take a long time to list them all. So I just consider following him online to keep up with everything that he's got going on. And then there's David Norick, another incredibly intelligent and talented author of the Rio Grande Valley. And he's really passionate about his work, just like Dr. W.F. Strong. See, David wrote a book called The Adventures of Exo and Psy, and it's all about helping educate uh, young children about the perils of diabetes, but in a fun and interactive reading. Not only is David dedicated to improving the health of our kids and valley kids, but, you know, he's actively involved in our local community just as William. So you might just see him out and about, and if you do, then <laughs> be sure to see say hello. And according to writers of the RioGrande.com, Eugene uh, Novogrodsky is another author from the 956 and he's also helped to shed a light on local talent as he's from Brownsville. You might know him as Gene and he writes great pieces for North American border slices and get this, his work reaches readers from Eastern Canada all the way to Central Mexico, of course including readers like us here in the Valley. Plus, the site outlines that he's one of the founders of the Narcissus Cecil Martinez Cultural Arts Center Writers Forum in San Benito, which is amazing. And not only that, Jean's even sometimes involved in the informal Resaca Writers Group uh, over in Brownsville. So he's definitely got a love for sharing the value of good literature with our community. And then there's Katie Hearth, uh, who's authored four different poetry books, and uh, her most recent piece of work, Goddess Wears Cowboy Boots, uh, actually won the Helen C. Smith Prize from the Texas Institute of Letters for the best book of poetry. Now, the site says that she's even published in journals like Texas Poetry Calendar, uh, Concho River Review, and Meso Camin, a journal of formal poetry by women. And like author W.F. Strong, she's touched the heart of so many students through her teaching of writing at uh, UTRGV. Plus, the site outlines that she's even a poetry editor uh, of Amarillo Bay and uh, Devilfish Review, which is amazing. So we're happy that she lives in Edinburgh and is just also helping to foster the RGV's love for reading. 
Now lastly, there is Christina Perez who now lives in Dallas, but she was born and raised here in the Rio Grande Valley. The site says that she helped her readers learn the inside outs of what it's like living outside the valley, as well as what it's like for those who have never had the opportunity to come here. Her work highlights the magic valley, she writes, uh, was, you know, like uh, what it was thought to be like to others. And it's really, really uh, fascinating. And if you haven't gotten a chance to check out some of her work, then you should definitely add it to your list like we did. So we're going to give you a chance to check out some of the work by these amazing authors because it's actually time now for us to take a quick commercial break. And we'll also give you a look at the local weather, but Valley Por Vida is going to be right back. And we'll talk about different tools and resources that parents can use for their teens as they navigate the social media world through Meta. Plus, we'll also talk to another author, this time about important takeaways in observance of men's health awareness. Now, there's a lot more to talk about, and we're going to do it, uh, you know, just that when we return. So we'll see you in a little bit.